and Jay Mix exclusive. How did you transition from Earth, Wind, and Fire into the hip hop industry? Okay, well, the, uh, the Earth, Wind, and Fire thing came about because I was uh, playing in the uh, Edwin Hopkins Music and Art Seminar, Los Angeles, after. And he's a, you know, Edwin Hopkins is a gospel singer. Like he did Oh Happy Day years and years ago, and he was like one of the first uh, gospel artists to like be contemporary. They started that temporary style and so they were friends with Earth, Wind and Fire and they, the family themselves, sang on We Can Touch the World and so when they went on tour, instead of taking the family with them, they would use different chapters of their seminar in different cities to sing with them. Now mind you, I played in there, I didn't sing in the choir, I played the instrument, but my sister sang in the choir and I was driving her to the actual show and when I get there, they're like need more altos. I'm like, hey, I can sing altos. So I jumped in, get a choir robe, and, you know, and I'm like singing five nights with them. Like, it's incredible. Wow. But I was, at that time, more involved in um, gospel music and was just peeking into, like, starting to do pop music. I had a, a, a publishing deal, and um, I was doing pop music at the time. I hadn't even gotten into hip-hop yet. But I had a few friends that was that grew up where I did, and Snoop and, and those guys, Warren G, all of those guys were all of my friends before they even, you know, had a deal. In fact, I would, would help them try to shop their deals to different labels, and and I ended up meeting Dr. Dre and tried to get him to hook up with Snoop and those guys, because I still, at that time, wasn't even doing it. I was doing pop music. And Dre was trying to get me to... to do hip hop with him and, and like part of his people and, and I was like, Well, I don't know, I don't know and I kinda of shied away from it. But then when Snoop blew, blew up, like when they got with Dre and they blew up, I was like, Man, this is killing me because all these pop records I'm doing are not coming out and I'm failing at this. So I need to break away. I was with a production team and it was three of us and I just broke away and said, I'm gonna start doing hip hop with my home radio, OG radio from Long Beach. So in the midst of doing that, um, he had a record deal with Interscope Records, and he signed his deal at the same time Tupac signed his deal. And so we're working on radio's album. Tupac he drops the album, the uh, Apocalypse, Tupacalypse, and, and something else, and, and like you know, I get around all that stuff, and I'm like, man, I really would like to do some work with that cat. Well, it turns out the people at Interscope heard radio stuff. He said, man. Let's, let's send a tape to Tupac and send it to him. Tupac was like, let's get him out here. Flew me to New York about five days after the conversation. I had sent them a demo tape. And he loved it. Flew me to New York. And I started working. And the first track I did was Outlaw. And uh, he loved it. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I jumped something because I forgot about this. The day that I sent him the uh, cassette tape, they put me in the studio out here in California and had three songs for me that they wanted me to remix. They already had this, every, it was a full song, but they wanted me to change the music. And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm into remix, and I'm good at that. So I started, and, and the first song was From the Cradle to the Grave. What was the original, then, I'm sorry to interrupt, what was the original okay. sample that they wanted you to cover? Um, I don't remember what the, what the, real, the, the original music was. I didn't use any samples in it, I played all the instruments. You know, we did that in like, I think it was two nights we and, and, and did it from the crib to the grave, Lord knows, and running from the police. So they took that, sent it to him, he loved it, and then they flew me to New York. And then we did Outlaw. And from that, from then on, it was just, you know, we I, we came back out to California and we just kept on working on music. He kept calling me to either remix something or to, you know, bring me a new track I could work on, you know, and I'd go in there and start it from scratch and, a few hours later, we have a song, and we just kept going and going until he was starting to really have the, the trouble with the, you know, the uh, going to court and all that stuff. He had to be in New York a lot, leave a lot. So what he would do was still get with other producers and do stuff, but then they would like have me remix it or, or Tony Pizarro or um, Donny J. Like they had like three or four different cats that they would have to, to like mastermind will the thing. So they would do demo tracks with him wrapping his real vocal over it. And so we would take it and, and redo it. 
this is on me against the world, right? Yeah, we, because I, from the cradle to the grave, they put on the album that day I was out there doing Outlaw. They loved it so much, they were like, we're going to put this version on the album. And it was supposed to be remixed, and they were supposed to have the other version on the album. But they loved it, they were like, no, nah, we're going to put it on the album, and it's going to be the first single. And I'm just like freaking out, like, wow, just like that. In a, in a two-week period, the song was on the radio. <laughs> and I'm like, this is unbelievable. Yeah. And we just kept going from there. And Jane Mix exclusive. What up, we shut up.